Jim's not in the audience. Okay. Uh, Cooper is not in the office. Uh, Assembly Member Chow. You have one item, item 29, 28, 64. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and members. AB 2864 asks the State Board of Education, or SBE, during the next revision of the history social science framework to consider including instruction on the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 and the contributions of Chinese Americans to the establishment of the Transcontinental Railroad. Chinese Americans have played a significant role in the history of California and the United States, such as builders of the Transcontinental Railroad, which will soon celebrate its 150th year anniversary of its completion. However, they have also faced hardship, discrimination, and unequal treatment. For instance, the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 was the first major law to single out and forbid a specific ethnic group, namely the Chinese, from immigrating to and becoming naturalized citizens of the United States. Um, I um, understand the committee had some concerns about this particular bill and I'd like to briefly address them. Uh, the concern being that the, uh, currently the IQC is uh, trying to address that uh, by putting together the framework which already covers uh, these two topics. And, um, and the uh, response is that uh, I do understand that they're going through that process. Uh, although I also understand that the uh, framework has not been approved or submitted to the uh, uh, Board of Education uh, for its final um, consideration. So, and more, more importantly, uh, it is the fact that uh, the bill actually contains suggestive language, i.e. it uh, asks that the uh, IQC to consider, merely consider, instead of uh, mandating uh, any action on the board or on the uh, part of the IQC. And uh, more importantly also is the fact that I think uh, the passage of this bill will con convey a strong message to the IQC and also the state board uh, of the, um, uh, that we, the legislature, want a comprehensive uh, curriculum for our kids that contains all the major historical um, events. And, uh, and this is also a, uh, one of the API priority bills uh, and it's very also very important for the district. And similar uh, language uh, could be found in a bill, for example, AB 146, which was signed into law by the governor last year, although the bill itself dealt with a different subject matter, uh, dealt with uh, uh, deportation uh, uh, issues. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to ask for your I vote and uh, also like to also share that uh, this bill received a unanimous uh, vote uh, consent in the assembly without a single no vote. So with that, I respectfully ask for I vote. Okay, those in um, uh, support of the bill, please come forward. Good morning, Madam Chair and members. Lee Angela Reed on behalf of San Francisco Unified School District in strong support. Thank you. Ernie Silva for the School for Integrated Academics and Technologies. We are also in support. Okay. In support. A lot of moving people. Okay. Uh, in opposition to the bill. The committee didn't receive any opposition to the bill and um, any questions or concerns uh, to the author from members of the committee? Um, you know, uh, Senator Pan has moved the bill. I, you know, um, Assembly Member Chow, we did have a conversation about this, um, your bill today, and I'm, you know, we have seen in this committee and in the Assembly Committee um, several bills dealing with what I call one-offs. Uh, I want to include this, I want to include that. And, um, you know, in your, your particular case, the uh, topics of both the um, Chinese Exclusion Act and the uh, Chinese participation in the Transcontinental Railroad are already in the current um, uh, framework, and they continue to be in the framework. The framework will be approved of uh, this year. 
And uh, I think, and it will not be revised again for another eight years. So, um, you know, I particularly, you know, appreciate, um, you know, you're presenting the bill, but I really would like you to uh, consider holding it in the committee to allow us more time for um, both the Assembly Ed and the Senate Ed staff to work on a more integrated approach rather than having, as you see in the analysis, um, you know, the Great Irish Famine, uh, the uh, Armenian and Cambodian Darfu, Rwandan genocides, et cetera, that we do a better job about um, integrating all of these uh, topics in our framework. And, um, and I, um, so that's where I am on this bill. And I can appreciate it being an API priority, but, but, but it's already in the framework. Yes, yes, sir. Madam Chair, I was prepared to vote for this because I do think it's important that our that it be in the framework that our kids learn about this. And you know, I've carried some of these one-off things myself, as you've commented on previously. Um, but I, I think you've made a compelling argument that we should have a more focused approach to this and bicameral. So I'm going to honor your request and lay off of this vote today. Thank you. Any other comments or uh, concerns here, questions from members? I mean, I, I really, um, you know, after the years that we spent on this committee and trying to integrate everybody's special interests, it's been really problematic. And we we fight over these issues all the time. And, and uh, not that it's not worthwhile, because it is, but we need to find a better way of trying to handle these topics. Um, and for the framework for our kids. So um, there's been a motion. Uh, would you like to close, please? I respectfully ask for I vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is item number 29, AB 2864. The motion is due pass to appropriations. Lou? Not voting. Block? Hancock? Huff? Leva? Leva I. Mendoza? Monning? Pan? Pan I, Vidak. Block I. Three zero. Three zero. We'll keep the roll open for our absent members. Thank okay. You Thank you. Okay. I see Mr. Gomez. You're here for Ms. Lopez, right? And a couple of your bills. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's see. We'll, we'll do you. For, we'll do you first. You have item 15, um, AB 2294. Yes. Start with it. Chair and Senators, let me begin by accepting the amendments recommended in staff comments number three and number four. Today I'm no, I'll continue. Today I'm presenting Assembly Bill 2294, which will require California State Universities to grant release time to an employee who has been elected to serve as an officer in an affiliated union. This bill will give CSU faculty the same rights to leave as enjoyed by K through 12 and community college employees that participate in an affiliated union. The cost of the leave of absence will be fully reimbursable by the union as the employee will be receiving normal compensation retirement fund contributions during their leave. Here to speak on the bill, I have a couple of witnesses. Good morning. My name is Susan Green and I'm an associate professor of Chicano Studies and History at California State University, Chico. I also serve on the District Q Higher, I serve as the District Q Higher Ed Director on the California Teachers Association Board of Directors. AB 2294 is a necessary solution to a problem that did not exist until June 2015. For decades, my predecessors had been bought out without cost and without objection. It was only CSU administration's desire to change past practice that made us aware that the CSU did not enjoy in statute what K-12 and community college educators did. For decades, CSU administration demonstrated that the provisions in AB 2294 can be implemented without the cost and the chaos that they are now claiming. 
The CSU demonstrated perfectly why bargaining is not the best solution to the problem as it is subject to interpretation, violation, and lengthy grievances in ways a statute would not. While I was able to negotiate a workaround personally with a third party union, the California Faculty Association, for work that is done on the California Teachers Association board, it does not make it the right solution. The right solution is to create statutory parity and equity for CSU faculty with our educators, sisters, and brothers, and I urge the committee to pass 2294. Thank you. Thank you. Others in support? Senator, uh, Senator Lou, members, uh, David Bella Hawkins with the CSU Employees Union. Um, we consider this a very simple bill. K through 12 and community college uh, employees have protections to be able to do this, and we're asking for equity for CSU. Ask for your eye vote. Thank you. Um, others in support of the bill? Michael Young on behalf of the California Labor Federation also here in support. Thank you. Okay, any others in support? Any opposition to the bill? Morning. Good morning. Uh, Andrew Martinez, California State University System. Uh, we have an opposed, less, posi less amended position. Well, we are appreciative of the author agreeing to the two amendments. Uh, we still would like to use our existing MOU collective bargaining union leaves prior to any other leaves being used. Um, we continue to look forward to working with the author as the bill moves forward, and thank you so much. Thank you. Assemblymember Gomez. Yes. Are you still in conversation with CSU? Um, I'm always in conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will uh, uh, take it into account and then see if we can resolve any issues. Thank you. Okay. Any um, any other questions or uh, comments from members? I am surprised that um, as, as that this has come up and it's not in statute. So I mean, I know that happens with K twelve. So, as Senator Block. Yeah, I, I mean, there are so many differences between the way the state treats the CSU and right. the UC and how it treats K twelve and community colleges. Um, I don't think the CSU would want to be treated like the K-12 in a lot of areas where we have much stronger <laughs> oversight. Um, so I'm not sure that's a great argument for it, that we need to do things the same with K-12 faculty as we do with university faculty. Having said that, I mean, I'll support the bill, but I would like to ask Mr. Gomez, as you did, to have more conversation with the CSU, because I think this is an area where um, there might be minor changes that might be able to bring them on board, and uh, I'd like to see that, uh, but I, I will support the bill. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from members? The bill has been moved. Would you like to close, Assembly Member? I ask for your I vote. Okay. Item 15, AB 2294, the motion is due pass as amended to appropriations. Lou? Hang on for a second. Can you amended? Yeah. Okay. Uh, aye. Lou, aye. Block? Block I, Hancock, Huff, no. Huff no, Leva, aye. Leva I, Mendoza, <coughs> Monning, Han, aye. Han I, Vidak, no. Vidak no. It's four two. Four two. Um, we'll leave the roll open for our absent members. You also have um, item twenty three, AB twenty six twenty one. Thank you, uh, Chair and Senators. Today I'm presenting Assembly Bill. AB 2621, which requires all K through 12 schools that have an, a school employee code of conduct to send it home in an annual packet at the beginning of each school year. This bill also requires schools that have a website to post this code of conduct on their public website. By making sure all parties in the education environment understand an employee's expectations for code of for conduct, we, we are making the environment safer for everyone. Here to speak on the bill, I have Phoebe Kong, a student from Marlboro School in West Los Angeles. Thank you, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Chairwoman Liu and members of the Senate Education Committee, my name is Phoebe Kong and I am a junior at Marlboro School in Los Angeles. Thank you for allowing me to appear before you this morning to give testimony in support of my bill, AB 2621. As you know, AB 2621 passed the Assembly Education Committee on consent and received a unanimous yay vote on the Assembly floor on May 16th. Both of these events were extremely encouraging to me and to Assembly Member Jimmy Gomez, who is the author of this bill. 
And now I'm excited and honored to be able to appear before you today to tell you why this bill is so critical for student safety and why I feel so passionately about it. First, this bill is about raising awareness about student teacher boundaries for all parties involved, including, including school staff, faculty, parents, and students. Most importantly, it is about helping students protect themselves and not about teacher discipline. I believe that teachers can have an incredibly positive impact on a student's life, as many have had on mine. That being said, in any situation in which adults interact with minors, there will inevitably be some incidents of misconduct, as was the case at my school with the well-known scandal that became public in 2014. Moreover, these cases may go unknown for many years. In the case at my school, the incident, the incident occurred 14 years earlier, and the victim was already in her 30s when she eventually came forward in 2014. Second, the reason this crime is so hard to spot is that it often occurs subtly and over time through a process that psychologists and law enforcement officials refer to as grooming. That is to say, the perpetrator breaks little rules and quietly oversteps little boundaries, one at a time, slowly becoming more friendly, more personal, and more trusted until eventually they are in a position to commit a real crime. The problem is that almost no parents or students have any idea what is on their own school's employee code of conduct with students because it is normally not distributed to families and it is not posted publicly anywhere. At my school, for instance, it is against the rules for a teacher to meet one-on-one -on -one off campus with a student. It is also against the rules to give personal gifts, use personal email or social media to communicate with students, or give a student a ride in their personal car. In fact, almost every way that a predator might try to groom a student is outlined and forbidden in my school's employee code of conduct, but none of my friends or I have ever seen it. AB 2621 aims to prevent such grooming by making each school's employee code of conduct with students transparent. I believe that we will succeed in preventing these crimes not by asking the state to intervene and police the situation, but by empowering the community of parents, teachers, and especially students to protect themselves. My bill simply proposes that all schools in California be required to post their code of conduct with students on their public facing website and to distribute it within the annual packet that is already mailed to parents at the beginning of each school year. The state would not be mandating any particular conduct guidelines, but merely requiring that schools distribute their own. This keeps local control with the schools and additionally the cost to the state as well as the compliance burden on schools is extremely low. Moreover, by requiring that schools post their post their code of conduct with students on their website, we will bring free market forces to bear because once their policies are made public, schools will naturally compare their own policies against their peer schools, and in doing so, will adopt and share the best policies and practices that they find elsewhere, thereby creating a virtuous and self-perpetuating upward trend toward the best conduct guidelines and the highest level of awareness at all schools. AB 2621 is common sense, pro-transparency, prevention-oriented, free market-based, easy to implement, and finally inexpensive. If a little alarm is raised when a little boundary is crossed, we are much more likely to prevent a big boundary being crossed, such as an actual sexual assault. By raising awareness among parents and students, predators will be stopped at the beginning of the grooming process, ultimately having a major beneficial impact on this horrible problem. Thank you for, your, for your attention to this important issue. Thank you very much. Others in support of the bill? Is there any opposition to the bill? The committee didn't receive any, any questions. Senator Leva? I just wanted to thank the author for bringing this bill forward. I think that many times young people don't know what is appropriate and not appropriate, and just letting them know um, what the, the parameters are is wonderful. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Is that a motion on the bill, Ms. Leva? Okay, the bill has been moved. Would you like to close, Assembly uh, Member? I just pr appreciate the chair and the senator's time on this. As, as Phoebe indicated, um, it's better to kind of make sure everybody's aware of what the, the code of conduct is for everyone. And if, uh, if she is a testament to our future and our, and our educational future, I know we're in good hands because she's very impressive. So I ask for your and I vote. Thank you. Okay, the bill has been moved. Let's call the roll. Item number 23, AB 2621, the motion is due pass to the floor. Lou? Aye. Lou I Block? Aye. Block I Hancock? Huff? Aye. Huff I Leva? Aye. Leva I Mendoza? Monning? Pan? Aye. Pan I Vidak? Aye. Vidak I. 
That's six. Six sufficient for passage. We'll keep the roll open for our absent members. And you have one more item 27 for Ms. Lopez. Thank you. Uh, Chair and Senators, uh, today I'm presenting my last bill, which is actually for Assembly Member Lopez. The, it's Assembly Bill 27. 66, which will add two additional seats, student seats to the California Student Aid Commission board membership to create equal student representation on the board. Currently, there are only two student representatives on the board that represent all four college and university educational systems in California. These student members are able to give input on board decisions and cast an official vote. AB 2766 will ensure that the diverse uh, viewpoints and needs from the different school student bodies are able to be heard and are given equal representation. I ask for your I vote. Hey, in support of the bill. Uh, Matthew Canty with the Faculty Association of California Community Colleges in support. Thank you. Thank you. In support. Good morning, Madam Chair and members. Alejandro Cortez on behalf of Maldif in support. Okay, great. All right. Any others in support? Is there any opposition? The committee didn't receive any written opposition. Any comments or questions from members? Senator Pan. I understand that we are also going to be hearing uh, another bill infecting students on the commission by uh, some of our Medina, and it right. does appear to me that there are some conflicts between the two. So, uh, for example, I believe in his bill, uh, the student can serve on the commission for up to a year after he's no longer he or she. So I was just wondering how those conflicts will be resolved. Well, only if there, you know, if there's not a reappointment. I mean, for the for Medina's bill. I mean, if right. if there's not a reappointment automatically, then that person can continue to serve. But I understand in this bill, unless I've read it wrong, that yeah, you can only serve if you're actually person. actively enrolled. So <laughs> I could see where I could see a situation where one bill says one thing, another bill says the other, and of course we haven't heard that one. So who knows what might happen to it? But well, this one simply just adds. A couple of members, uh, a member from each institution. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. See, see, They're different code sections. Clarify, and, a student and, member must be enrolled in the post So that's what I was looking at. You want to? Okay, well, maybe. Um, I have my expert witness, the staffer for Ms. Uh, Lopez. <laughs> uh, would you like to uh, respond to the senator's question? I, I mean, I'm supportive of the bill. I'm no, just, no, I'm I know. Just, I just wanted to clarify how we're going to resolve some of these conflicts yeah. or how, uh, or perhaps uh, uh, Senator Lopez and Medina can. And, and hopefully working with the Ed Committee staff here, be sure the, the uh, potential conflicts would be uh, resolved, so. Yes. From the Assemblywoman's standpoint, when we introduced, the, when she introduced the bill, she didn't see a conflict. She thought that the two bills would be complementary to each other, but we're absolutely willing to work with uh, uh, Mr. Medina's and the Senate Ed's committees uh, to make sure that those conflicts don't happen. Because I just saw it says, you know, at, at the time appointment and during the duration of the term, which didn't seem to be, uh, seemed to be at least somewhat different than the other bill. That's that was my question. They, they can work it out, but I didn't see a conflict in it. But um, one was just uh, Lopez's bill simply is an addition, addition of two more mm -hmm. um, representatives, and um, Assemblymember Medina is um, how, long? how long? Right, just filling a vacancy, uh, mm -hmm. extending it to a year if the vacancy has not been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So we'll work it out. But. Is there, uh, there's been a motion on the bill? Was there a motion on the bill? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, would you like to close? Uh, on behalf of Ms. Lopez, I ask for an I vote. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is item number 27, AB 2766. The motion is due pass to appropriations. Lou? Aye. Lou, I Block? Aye. Block, I Hancock. Huff? Aye. Huff, I Leva? Leva, I Mendoza? Monning, Han, aye. Pan, aye. Vidak, aye. Vidak, aye. Six. Six votes, sufficient for passage. We'll keep the roll open for our absent members. Thank Assemb you so much. Thank you very much. Um, Assembly Member Cooper, you have item four, AB 1660. Welcome to the committee. Okay. Okay, thank you. Please. 
Good morning, Madam Chair, members. AB 1660 extends the authority for the California Interscholastic Federation to administer statewide rules regarding high school public and private athletic programs indefinitely. The bill required joint oversight hearing of the legislative committees which received the report proposed in this bill to be held every seven years that CIF reports are presented to the legislature and the governor. Since 1914, the CIF, I'm sorry, excuse me, the California Department of Education has allowed the CIF to regulate interscholastic athletics and the CIF has been the rulemaking body for all of California's K-12 athletics programs since 1917. The CIF plays a vital role in governing and creating an environment that promotes sportsmanship, honesty, and quality academics. By making current law permanent, this bill would eliminate the need for legislation to keep extending the sunset and will maintain all current policies and practices as well as reporting requirements to the legislature and the governor. I respectfully ask for your aye vote and with me are two members from the uh, CIF. Thank you. In support of the bill, please. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and committee members. I'm Roger Blake. I'm the executive director of the California Scholastic Federation here urging your aye support in AB 1660. And eight, over 800,000 student athletes that play sports in high schools of California. The CIF is a grassroots organization. It, it's governed by school board members and the elected officials by those school board members that serve the CIF. They're the ones who put in place the rules and regulations and codify the policies. And Madam Chair, in respect to your time and the time of this committee, I, I just cut to the chase. We believe that this bill will permanently put in place the safeguards for our students of the future. Safeguards in regards to the organization being accountable, having open meeting laws, transparency, following the Brown Act, not even to begin to mention all the health and safety issues and all the things that have been put in place over the last, well, 100 years, but specifically over the last 30 years. We believe and urge your I vote that this is a positive step to ensure safeguards for the future student athletes of California. Thank you, in support of the bill. Debbie, look, on behalf of State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tom Torlickson, in support. Um, in addition to pr promoting a healthy lifestyle, researchers, ha researchers have determined that student participation in education-based high school interscholastic athletics results in a rich educational experience. Healthy students not only excel academically, but are also most likely to be positively engaged in social, community, and extracurricular activities. The benefits of supporting student health are far-reaching, and that is why the superintendent has initiated the Team California for Healthy Kids campaign to promote physical activity and healthy eating throughout the day in schools in the community. I respectfully ask for your I vote on AB 1660. Thank you. Others in support of the bill? Erica Hoffman on behalf of the California School Boards Association in support. Thank you. Eric Bach with the Los Angeles Unified School District also in support. Thank you. Don Collins from the San Francisco Unified School District also in support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Jennifer Watson from Prunedale, California, here representing 152 high schools from the Central Coast, which runs from King City to South San Francisco, in support. Thank you. Good morning, Jim Critchlow from Porterville, representing 101 schools from Madera, Fresno, Kings, Tulare, Kern, and Inyo counties, in support. Thank you. Nancy Lacoste, representing Sacramento City Unified School District and Clovis Unified School District, in support. Thank you. John Aguirre from Los Angeles, representing 141 schools in the Los Angeles area, in support. Thank you. Alfonso Powell from the Oakland Unified School District, in support. Thank you. Elizabeth Kyle from Fall River. Um, I'm representing 70 schools from the Oregon border, Siskiyou and Monoc counties, all the way down to Yuba and Sutter County, in support. Mike Garrison from Sacramento, here representing 196 schools in the Sac Joaquin uh, area, uh, from Merced to Yuba City, in support. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Rob Wygod from Los Alamitos. I represent 582 high schools, starting in San Luis Obispo, down to San Clemente, and all the way east to the Arizona and Nevada border, in support, thank you. Thank you. I'm Jerry Schneep from San Diego, and uh, I'm representing 123 schools in San Diego and Imperial counties in support. Thank you. I'm Gail Levin, Dublin, 
I support 176 schools in the North Coast section uh, from the Newark, Fremont area all the way up to uh, Crescent City, Oregon border. I'm in support. Thank you. Okay, any others in support? Is there any opposition? The committee didn't receive anything in writing. Any questions from members? The bill has been moved. Would you like, it, it we're pretty easy this morning. Would you like to close? I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Okay, quick. This is item number four, AB 1660. The motion is due passed to the floor. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Hancock? Huff? Aye. Huff, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mendoza? Monning? Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Vidak? Aye. Vidak, aye. Six. Six votes, sufficient for passage. We'll keep the roll open for our absent members. Thank you very much. We have item uh, 12, AB 2212, uh, Assemblymember Harper. 